crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Ink It Up tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make cards using the stamp set called Hey Chick. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you seven projects, six that I created and one from a friend, using this stamp set. This stamp set was originally published, or I guess I would say produced, by Stampin' Up! in 2017, I believe, as part of Celebration. And very rarely do we ever have items returned like this, but I think it was just by, by popular demand and enough people said, please bring back the hay chick. And although I originally got this in wood, I love my wood mounted stamps, it's now in the cling stamp set, which you'll be happy about because you can do more positioning with the cling stamp set, which mounts on acrylic blocks. So in a little while, I'll show you the dies that go with this, but I want to start out this tutorial by doing some coloring. And what I have here are the Stampin' Blends. Okay, and I'm going to, so the way this tutorial is going to go is I'm going to start out by coloring some chickens and that'll be fun. We'll have some elements for cards. I would show you then how to arrange those in a card. Let me make sure everything's in the view. Okay, I want to show you what the dies look like and how, how you would use them, how you would go from stamping to die cutting something. Okay, I want to show you that. And when I would use my markers, okay, when I would when I would need to use the markers as opposed to the blends. So we'll talk about technique. Then you can see my process for making cards. I'll just kind of put some together without making you watch me create the card itself and the card base without having you make, wait for all that. I have a lot of card bases made so I can easily put some of these embellishments that we color onto cards and you're going to get to see how I, my process of putting that together in a really cute project so before and after. Okay and then finally I will show you the seven projects I created. Let's see one two three. I created five cards plus one little bag I decorated and then a, friend, a card from a friend. All right so without further ado I want to thank my subscribers the Paper Chef YouTube channel just reached 24,000 subscribers. So I'm very grateful to you for being one of my subscribers. And if you're new here, please subscribe if you like paper crafting. I do a lot of stamping up and brother scan and cut tutorials and things like that. But thank you all. I'm very humbled and grateful that 24,000 people love my channel. Or I should say like my channel or subscribe to my channel. You know what I mean. All right, so when you use the blends, Let's get right into this. I'm going to just start by the, with these blends. I'm going to just start with this Mango Melody. We're going to do this, this one here. So when you use the blends, you take your... Oh, thanks, Susan. Thank you. And hello. So when you take your blends, you're always going to take the dark side and color around the outside first. There's a thick side and there's a thin side to each of the Stampin' Blends. Thanks, Rose. So what I'm going to do... And actually, I'm just going to use, I'm going to use, I'm still using the dark side first, but I'm just going to use the thin side because what I want to do is I want to then, I want to use the thin side to kind of go around the outside of this hen. And then I'm going to also touch upon those little, these little lines here. And so kind of emphasizing, so this is Mango Melody. There's a reason I'm using the different colors. I'm going to, I'm going to color these in a bunch of different colors. But I, I am using what's called the Artistry Blooms Designer Series paper for most of my projects. And this Mango Melody was one of the colors in the Artistry Blooms Designer Series paper. So I was like, oh, I could use that on, on my hands and it would really match. Now I'm taking the lighter, the lighter blends. of the. It's still Mango Melody, but it's lighter. It doesn't look that much lighter, right? It is lighter though. And I'm just kind of going like that. And I'm going to do the wing a little bit. But I'm leaving a little bit open here. I'm not coloring it all in. I'm just sort of going like that. Now I'm going to take my dark daffodil delight. And I'm going to blend. I'm going to blend that in a little bit in the middle. Okay. And then what I'm doing is. And I'm going to do the. I'm going to do daffodil delight in another one in a minute. But then I'm going to take my lighter daffodil delight. And I'm just going to make. 
the whole thing blend better together. Okay, so I'm just, it's always good to go dark around the outside. And now I'm just sort of filling in the gaps. So that's what I did with that hand. And I, then I took some. And then for this hand, I'm going to use just the daffodil delight. So we'll move. The, or is this one a rooster? I think that that's the rooster. Okay, for this rooster, I'm going to use just my daffodil delights and a little bit of mango melody as well. And I'm going to also use some Calypso Coral, the light Calypso Coral, because the Calypso Coral is something that's in that paper, the designer series paper that I'm using. And it really doesn't matter because if you if you use, like for, for most of my projects, I use the different, the different ver oranges and yellows, and it seemed to all work out fine. So sometimes I need to use my markers instead of the blends when coloring the little feet. Because the blends, although there is a fine side on the blends, see, there is a fine side. Let me compare that. Look at the difference in this fine. Here, look, I'll just draw. That's the finest it'll go with the blends, but that's, that's the marker. So this side is the marker. I'm just going to show you the marker, right? I can't even draw a straight line. And this is the blends. So the blends are much thicker, right? So when you want to make really small lines, you're going to use, you want to use your markers because the markers are very much finer. So, okay, so we're going to color in all the little chicken's feet. And sometimes I also use, for the beaks, my markers. Because the, it's just, it's real fine. See how that little fine, fine area. And it's just hard to do that with the blends. And let's do this little beak as well. And then I'm going to take this Calypso Coral marker and since so I'm going to take the thin side and I'm just going to do the little head. It kind of, the Calypso Coral is like a pinkish sort of. I'm just doing the head like that. And again, only because it's going to match my designer series paper. And what I did for that is I used the Calypso Coral and then I also used the light Calypso Coral but then I put some light pumpkin pie in there. Oops, I better use the thin side because sometimes the markers need to be a little bit... Um, sometimes you have to cut them. So what happens is if you, if they get frayed on the end like that, see, and the little nib, the nib is coming out. There, I have to push the nib back in but I also have to take my snips. Not right now because I need my snips. But I cut off the extra little piece because it's frayed at the end. Just so you know, that's how you do that. That's how you fix that. All right, now let's get back to this one. For this one, I used Daffodil Delight for the most part. And then I used Mango Melody to sort of fill in the wings a little bit. Okay, so you're waiting to see if the video will load. I hope my, video, I hope my internet is not that slow. All right, so I hope Susan and Rose and Janet, hello. Vicky, I hope you can all see this video. And if not, you know what? It when you when you catch this on the replay, it loads much better. It loads much faster. Right now, it's trying to do what's called live streaming, and when you live stream, it really depends on bandwidth, which I do not have good bandwidth. So it's just kind of it's kind of like. Oh, it was not just okay. I'm glad it was your internet, not mine, because my internet is already super unreliable. Which is why I have to do, I can never announce my lives because it might take me three attempts. So what I'm doing is I'm using Daffodil Delight now. Just to show you the difference between that and Mango Melody. Again, I just used all kinds of colors for these projects though. All kinds of red, oranges, not reds. All kinds of oranges and sort of coral and um, different yellows, different versions of yellows I had. And then what I did for the wing there is I'm going to use the Clipso Coral. The Clipso Coral and a little bit of the pumpkin pie as well. And you'll see that every time I colored it was different. I was, I was literally just watching TV, kind of binge watching um, Netflix. <laughs> and while I was binge watching Netflix, I, I, I checked out all kinds of different colors and did all kinds of different things to my chickens. 
oops, and so what I'm doing is the light, that, that is the light pumpkin pie, but even though it's a, it looks a little darker than the Clips of Coral, but then I take the Clips of Coral and I blend it back in there. It's still using the light Clips of Coral, but I'm just sort of blending it with the pumpkin pie. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you ordered the chick bundle already. Good for you. This is so much fun, the chick bundle. Hello, Lisa. So Vicki has the chick bundle coming. I I got the 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 hay check in 2017. But it's one of those one of those times I'm glad I'm a craft hoarder. Because when they said this was coming back out again, I'm like, I already have it. I never got rid of it because I love it so much. Alright, so that's that's a cool chicken. Now what you do is if you if you mess up when you're using the blends, just put all my markers back in here so I can keep them in order. What I have here is this is the first couple. These are these are the daffodil delights. It's not the lightest yellow we have. We have two other yellows. We have a so saffron that's even lighter than this. Then we have something called a punch party that's retired. Or not punch party. Pineapple punch that's retired. So these are the two yellows though. These are the daffodil delight and the mango melody. So you can kind of see that the mango melody is much more orange. Anyway, when you mess up on your coloring or you go outside the lines, there's really no mess up because they're chicken, right? Like you can't really mess up a chicken. But what you do is if you do if you do want to fix something, I'm taking hi Ron, I'm taking my what's called a color lifter. And it gets rid of any if you color outside the lines or you wanted to lighten up something. Like if I wanted to lighten up that wing, I can use my color lifter as well. But I tend to just use it on the outlines when I mess up and go outside the lines. Alright, so I'm liking my chickens so far. I'm liking my chickens. We're gonna do this chicken is super fun. We're going to do this. This is my favorite chicken. And I'll do those a couple different ways to compare. So again, this was Mango Melody and that was more Daffodil Delight. So the Mango Melody is oranger. So we'll do, we'll do one of the bodies in Mango Melody and one in Daffodil Delight again to compare that. All right, so now the hair. The hair, or I don't know if it's hair, it's the feathers. These, these you want to make all funky, right? You want to make it all funky. So if you, if you only have Stampin' Markers, they tend to be darker than... Then blends, but that's what you can use because there's the fine tip. Okay, so if that's all you have, that's fine. But I tend to use for the hair because I'm going to blend all the colors together later. It's going to be all frizzy. Wait, I want to go darker last. What you're going to do is decide what colors you want to make the hair. You need like three colors just to make it all kinds of funky. And so what you want to do is take your three, say I'm going to use some dark Calypso Coral. I'm going to use some of the pumpkin pie, right? Oh, you do? Yes, that's what that's what someone asked you to use, Janet, is a whole other color palette that I'm using on their chickens. And I'm going to use this Mango Melody. So these are going to be my hair colors. I'm using the three dark ones for the hair. So I'm going to start with the light one. Later on, I'm going to take one of these lighter yellows and I'll blend all the hair together to make sure I fill in any white gaps. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this lids off. I'm just going to take the lids off because I want to just be able to do this quick, you know, and then blend them. Oops, wrong side. I want to make sure I'm on the thin side because I'm doing the, and I'm going to do the tails at the same time. So again, I always start with the, always start with the uh, lighter color because then you blend it later. So you see, I'm just going to, since I'm using three colors, I'm going to skip a couple, right? And I'm going to skip a couple lines and do something like that. Okay, so that's how I'm going to color the hair. And we'll do it again over here. See, so just kind of, Kind of like that with the feathers. Is that fun or what? Oh my god, I love this. I love this set. So now I'm doing the tail a little bit. Again, skipping around a little because I want to make it colorful. Okay, and now I can, I think I'm done with that color. So I'm going to be, put that back. So now I'm going to take the pumpkin pie. And again, just do some hair. You know, every third or so one. Because I want to make these feathers. I don't want to say hair, again feathers. Everybody always corrects me with my my anatom my anatomy of animals because I make stuff up as I go along when I when I called a monkey a sloth or a sloth a monkey and when I name the birds wrong all the time. But anyway, you know what I mean. It looks like hair, although it's feathers. Okay, so now I'm done with the pumpkin pie. See how quick that is? Just wanted to kind of do that in real time. 
to show you how I do it. I take off all three. I usually don't take off lids, all my lids, but in this case, I take off all the lids and I just sort of, I just do it. I get it done. See, now I'm done. And now I'm going to fill it in with a light one to fill it, to fill it up. I'm going to kind of do that, do that a little bit. And I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to take any light color of yellow. It doesn't matter. As long as I don't have any white feathers showing. Okay, I know you guys are commenting, so I hope you guys can all definitely, I see, okay, lots of comments coming in. Wow. I know you're commenting with each other, which is great because I can't read it in color, but Carol, hello, Carol and Jean. Oops, wrong one. I did, did I just put that away? Oh, no, I need it. I need one of the light colors. Like I could take, I could just say like, take this light one. I could take the light daffodil delight. And what I'm doing is just taking it and sort of blending in everything that's left over. I'm just getting rid of all these little white areas and sort of just going in there and blending them all together. And it it looks dark now, but it does lighten up. And that's that's how I do the that's how I do the head. And I did the heads, I tried different things. I tried giving one a little bit of smoky slate earlier and crumb cake. But all in all it worked better when I used the oranges and the yellows. That's what tended to work better. When, no matter all my experimentation and that's what worked better okay so oh he's so much fun this one's it would be okay to use the thin side except that mine's drying out so mine's drying out so I have to kind of use the thick side because that's much wetter see it's blending much better on the that side and I'm just going to blend those colors together now for the inside of the body I'm going to do I'll do one in daffodil delight light and dark and then I'll do the other one in Mango Melody, light and dark, just to show you the difference. You know, the difference in color. So we'll do Daffodil Delight. And whenever you're blending, you're always going to start with the dark around the outside of the body. Like that. And you can even do the whole head. Just leave the beak empty for now, because I will use the marker for the beak. Okay. And so that one's done. That's the dark daffodil delight. And I'll list all the colors I use, but really I don't want it I don't want you to get hung up on colors because others maybe make them blue and purple. I mean, make them any colors you want. But the I think what I want to emphasize though is make sure that if you're going to have dominant colors in your design that they match your designer series paper. That 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 really does make a difference, I think. So see how this is oranger, that's the mango, this is the mango melody. And when I used the designer series paper that had mango melody in it, that, that chick really matched well. Okay, now I'm gonna use the mango melody to show you the difference between that and the daffodil delight, just so you can see how the mango melody is much more orange in color, see? And the reason I chose to use artistry blooms, and I think I used a little bit of the Oso ombre, the artistry blooms had a lot of oranges in it. It had the mango melody. It had, it had like a lot of colors in it that I thought looked good with chicks, that would be good for the farm. <laughs> so that's why I used. That's why I decided. And now I'm using the light mango melody. Is what I'm doing. But it's still, it's still getting dried out. It's like these, these tutorials make me know which ones I still need to get. See, look at the difference between the thick side and the thin side. My thin side is drying out so it's probably time to get a new marker when it makes squeaky noises like that now I know everyone says oh you can just refill them well I can refill them I tend to give them away before I refill them because I can't be bothered refilling them but I did I mean I, I bothered to refill them a little bit see how it's oranger that's the mango melody I just sometimes it's easier just to give them away than it is to to refill them because I have to get out the now I'm using the little Clipso Coral marker. And I'm going to use the pumpkin pie marker for the for the legs. Oh, you refill them? I mean, because these are alcohol markers, so the way to refill them is you take this out with my husband's tool. But the problem is I couldn't get these back in again. I call these the little nibs. I couldn't really get them back in. And then he puts a couple drops of alcohol in there. But you know what? It just, it didn't really work. It was too much work. Sometimes things are too much work and then I end up cracking a couple markers I don't know I, I, I get a lot of use out of them before they dry out if the marker 
can be refilled and I just refresh it once. Now, I don't put re inker in it or anything like that. I'm just talking about putting a little bit of alcohol in it to make it last. And then viewers gave me tips and everything about putting more ink in it, but I didn't get that far. Now, I do use re inkers on these in a little bit of ink. These are not alcohol based, so you wouldn't use alcohol in a regular marker. These are dye based markers. Right now, I'm only comparing the tips though. It doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm coloring on paper. So this is a dye-based ink and it's a water-based and this is an alcohol-based. So when you refill these, you can refill it with alcohol. You would never put alcohol in these kind because these aren't made of alcohol. This isn't an alcohol marker. All right, so that's, that's, that's the chicks. I'm so happy with my chicks. Let me put them on a thing so you can see how. So that's the, that's the Daffodil Delight on the left and the Mango Melody on the right. Hi, Linda. Okay, so then if you, again, if you want to take, if you want to lighten anything up or you want to fix mistakes, you use what's called the color lifter. And I can go like that to lift off some color. If I color it outside the lines, it really doesn't matter. Like, just if you want to. All right, so now, did I color all, I colored all the three chicks. Okay, we don't need to color all the chicks. Now, you got enough idea of how I color them. And now I have the little eggs. So I want to do some stamping with you and show you how to color little eggs and show you how to put together some cards and things like that. So here's the stamp set. We're going to take your good egg because I don't have any more of those. Um, again, I'm using wood, but you would just use, I mean, you're going to use the cling stamp set because that's what we're selling. We don't sell wood anymore, so don't get confused by that. I have to just say it again in case you just came on. Don't be confused with the kind of stamp I have. I'm not buying a whole new cling stamp set. I did buy one actually, but I've already given it away as a prize um, to my, in one of my challenges. But my point is the, the wood I already have. So that's why I'm using, that's why I'm going to keep it. And when I do this with kids, like kids craft clubs and things, always stamp onto your paper before you stamp onto your basic white cardstock. Okay. So that's, that's the egg. Okay, and I'm just going to do a couple of those. We'll, we'll die cut that out. Okay, that's the little egg. And I need to make a couple of little signs because I think I'm out of signs. Okay, so now I want to show you the dies. And we'll, we'll use the dies. Okay, so these are the chick dies. Okay, let me just show you the, here, they're called chick, mine are a hot mess. I've already been using them a lot. Okay, they're called chick dies. There are 19 chick dies. Why are there 19? Because they have these little corns. These are my little tricks. I'll show you. I'll show you how to cut those in a minute. But let's just do the sign while I have the white. So these dies go with each. So there's one of the dies that go with this egg. There's a die that goes with this chicken here, right? So there's a die that goes with each. There's this die which I love because this is hard to do with the skin and cut like cutting out the inside of the legs like that with the little outline as well. So I like this die. This is like awesome to have a die that cuts out. So I've, I cut these with the dies actually. And then you have what's called texture, texture dies. This little chicken coop is textured. Mine didn't come out real tex textured yet because I didn't use an embossing mat. But when, when the embossing mats come out, these are gonna have more of an embossing texture to them. But, but when I use gold foil, I was able to get the embossing texture. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna make a couple signs, okay? So I'm going to die cut the egg in a couple signs and that'll give you an idea of how I die cut these and then I'll give you some other tips. All right, so what we need is we need the little, you're a good egg. So what I'm going to use is the mini. This is the mini, the die cut and emboss machine. And when you're die cutting metal dies, you're going to take, you're just going to open up your little machine and you're going to put down the base plate. This is the base plate, gives you the instructions, right? Put down the base plate, plate number one. You put down, you're going to use two plate number twos. Now my t number twos, I was cutting some cactus from the flowering cactus medley. And look at all the little pieces of cactus, not pieces of cactus, but all the little stars that got caught in my plate. But that's okay. So the scratch side is going to be the side that I put down. And then this is my top number two. So there's a birth number two, but I put the scratch one down. Then I'm going to put my dies on there like that. I'm going to cut out a little sign and I'm going to cut out a little you're a good egg. But I'm not using a magnetic plate. So I need to just use some tape. Okay, it's important to use a little bit piece of tape. 
washi tape, painter's tape, because you don't want your die slipping when you when you cut it. And I get asked all the time, do you color before you die cut? And absolutely not. Do not color these before you die cut because you could mess them up and you'll waste all this time coloring and they might not die cut correctly. They might slip. So don't die, don't color until you, until you die cut them. Now, when you put these plates in, don't ever put them in flush to each other. Don't try to put them all through the machine flush like this because it's like, it's, it's too flat. It won't get caught in the machine. So you need to move these a little bit, stagger them, like maybe like this a little, stagger them. So when you put them in the machine, there's something to grab onto. I do put the smaller side first so I can feel it grabbing on, okay? And now I can just crank my little, my little machine. Whoop, I'd say that. Maybe it didn't grab on. <laughs> there we go. It's grabbed on, okay? So sometimes it makes a little cracking noise. No big deal. Okay, so there's my good egg, it cut out, perfect. We'll cut out one more egg. We'll cut out the other good egg because I do a lot of projects like your good egg. Yeah, the magnet, we're gonna have magnetic sheets come out for this machine as well um, because they're gonna fit in here perfectly and I will get that one. But I do have a magnetic one for my big machine, just not for this little machine yet. I'm just going to use the ones when they come out because it's going to fit in here perfectly and I won't have to like do any. I'm just moving this down to make another sign. I don't know what happened to my first sign. Did you see? Maybe you guys all saw it. I don't know where it went. I cut out a sign and it should be somewhere. Some people tell me stuff like, it's stuck on your, <laughs> it's on the left, it's on the right. Like people see things I can't see when I'm. Oh well, it's gone, but that's okay. I'm going to cut another one. It probably went flying when I rolled it through the machine. So now I'm going to put the plates back through and roll it. Where did my little sign go? Again, I don't think I staggered these enough, so just push those in there. There we go. So if it doesn't catch, make sure you stagger them. That's that's the bottom line. All we need is all I need is one sign anyway, so. So here's my sign, and I want to show you that. See, there's a little bit of embossing going on. Let me put that on something. Here. I'll put that on something so you can see that. So let me make sure I'm focused my camera and my you've got some good lighting. So there is embossing on the sign, and so it's fantastic. And once I get an embossing mat, which we're coming out with, I'm sure, because it keeps referring to it, that's going to make a nice raised emboss sign even better. So I chose to use the basic white for the signs, and I also, oh, there it is. There's my sign. See? There it was. It was stuck in my die. To get it off, you just use some. Oh, look at that nice embossing. Which brings me to a point I was going to say, talk about. When you, when you want something to emboss and it's not doing enough deep embossing, look at the one when you put two pieces of paper through, how one gets better etching. So that's what I had to do for my little chicken coop when I couldn't get it to cut with just one piece of designer series paper. I doubled it up. All right, well, good. Now I have two signs because I'll, I'll, I'll be stamping them. All right, so then there's, there's the, um, the little egg. All right, so for the chicken coop... The, my tip about the chicken coop was to use a couple pieces of designer series paper. And I'm, I'm just using the wood here. The wood. This is from, um, what is that called? In Good Taste designer series paper. In Good Taste already has wood textures in it. So the In Good Taste is perfect for the chicken coop. And you need at least two. You probably could get maybe even three pieces of designer series paper. Now you don't need, when there's only one die... Right? You don't necessarily, you don't really need tape on there, right? To hold it on there because there's only one die. So there's no need for tape. Let me make sure I move my markers. And then one, let me move my markers away. One side is going to be a little bit better etched than the other. So when you're die cutting, these little holes are to poke through. 
Thank you, Jenny. Or Janae, I'm sorry. <laughs> not not Janny. Thank you, Janae. And Joe. And Vicky, hello. All right, so you see this? See that? See that beautiful etching on the chicken coop? But the etching only came out when I made when I put two layers. Look at the etching. See how that's beautiful? But in my cards, you'll see that my cards don't really have a lot of etching because you know it took me a, a few tries to discover. Look at the one in the back. The one in the back should be okay because I did double layers. No, it's not a, it's not as bad, it's not as good. The one in the front is etched a lot better. Okay? So, and of course, like I said, if you have an embossing mat, it's going to be better. But my first couple tries, I only used one piece of designer series paper, and I didn't get the etching. So I'll be using these for more cards. So that's just a little tip. Okay, a couple more tips before I move this, before I put the machine away. Because the, cutting the chickens is the same thing. You know, we're, we're, the cutting the chickens is the same as cutting the egg. <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? Right? So I don't need to show you that. And cutting this little wood piece is the same as cutting this. Okay? Now these these little pieces of corn though. I want to teach I want to talk about these little pieces of corn. So here's a piece of daffodil delight. This is what you must do when you cut this many little pieces of corn. Put them on a piece of tape first, right? These are little pieces of corn. Put them down on your put them down taped together. Otherwise, you're going to have them fall all over the place. Be picking them out of your clothes and everything else. Okay, so I just put them, I tape them together and then I roll th the corn through. So that's how I cut out the corn and that's how I cut out the leaves. And I used, for the corn I used Daffodil Delight and when I wanted to make it darker I just used markers. And for the, and then for the little, here's the corn. Isn't that fantastic? These little tiny corns. Now look, I got all them cutting out at once, all four. So let's put them down there. See? So now they're all taped together so I can just keep using it over and over. And then to get them off there, I want to leave the back tape on. That's just a piece of painter's tape, but to get them off, I could poke through them, but I didn't want to mess up my tape, so I just got my tape like like that. And I just pulled them off. So that's that's my corn. And to make the corn darker, you can use a little bit of marker on the corn. Okay, so aren't these awesome? Okay? And then the little I did the little leaves the same way. This is the little bottom of the pieces of corn. I just taped them together. I don't need to show you that with the old olive. I did it with old olive and granny apple green. I'll be showing you that with my projects. I used all the dyes in this machine, I mean in this set, except I didn't use these little seeds. Okay, I didn't use the seeds because, I mean, what am I going to do with tiny seeds like that? For crying out loud, I'll be picking seeds out of my clothes and all my stuff. I don't know. Someone might use the seeds. I, I, would, I can't wait to see somebody use the seeds in a project. <laughs> this little tiny seeds that they get out of the dye. I mean, you can make some cute little chicken feed. All right, so then the, I was going to, just a couple more things I experimented with. I thought, well, this would make a good sign, right, the crumb cake. But the problem is it doesn't look good when you stamp it, okay, in my opinion. It didn't really look that, it wasn't easy to read. So the, I made signs instead with Daffodil Delight and, and the uh, basic white. And then it was easier to read what I stamped onto the signs, okay. And then lastly, this little guy was a bugger. Oh, we'll do this one too. This is a little tip for this one. These little eggs are fantastic. So you put your you put your die, put your bottom plate down. Okay, and then you put your bottom plate down here. And then here's what you, here's a little tip for these eggs. I, I cut a bunch out in white and they didn't really get embossed that well and they were okay. But then I used brushed metallic cardstock. This is a piece of brushed metallic cardstock. Boom, stuck the eggs on there. And you can, and I put it down like that. And where do you see the eggs when when you use foil cardstock, and how much better they come out than on the white, which is pretty cool. Look at those eggs. You get you get the dots and everything, so you get textured eggs in the foil. I love the, these eggs. So anyway, that's. I'm just doing it again while I'm here because you know what. I don't want to have to look, dig this out later. I'm just going to cut the other two eggs with that little piece of brush metallic cardstock I already had there. So these these are these are dies. Now the only die I had tricky a trick with was this chicken wire die, and I should have used in retrospect now, knowing what I know now, I should have used black glimmer paper, or I should have used uh, silver foil when I made the chicken wire fence. 
but instead I tried to cut it with that, something that wasn't very thick and it was very hard to cut out and I had to like layer it twice and poke laps through. But I think if I would have just cut the chicken wire out in foil in the first place, it would have been as easy to cut out as these eggs are here. These eggs are so easy to cut out with foil. Okay, so there's my eggs. And they're already attached together like that. So I'm going to put them back on the container. So the so this piece here, you need to, I would say, use foil cardstock or use a few sheets of, uh, two sheets of cardstock to get that to come out. Okay, now let me show you my little what I call my bucket of crafty goodness of all the extra things I cut out. I didn't get these little middle pieces cut out, even doubling and even tripling up, I think. I didn't get these out all the way, but that's okay because this chicken wire is awesome and you can always, let me move this little machine. You can always hide a chicken in front of it. So let me make some room. I'll right, show you my projects. All right, sorry for the loud noise. You can always, when you're coloring this guy, then, and you put them on a card, you can put something in front of them like that. So, you know what I mean? So he won't be, so the chicken wire element can be hidden if you can't pop all the little pieces out. Okay? So that's a fantastic element. Now I want to talk about coloring your elements. Yeah, a couple of layers. And my sister, Vicky, my sister also says she uses, oh, she used copy paper? That's good. Yes, the goose that lays the golden egg, Linda. All right, so yeah, Vicki, my sister always tells me to use wax paper. And, and it really does help. Parchment paper and wax paper. It'll really help get this dye out. So this dye is fantastic. So now I showed you how, about all the dyes. And then the corn came out like this, the corn piece. Fantastic, right? Look at that piece of corn and these little pieces of corn. And I mean, and the, see, the little white eggs aren't as great as the golden eggs. All right, so this is my little bucket of stuff. Now, so when you get this little piece, or you get whatever you get here, let's get, let's let's talk about the sign and a couple techniques, and then I'll show you my cards. So, and let's put this die back so I don't lose it. I usually store them on a magnetic sheet. I just haven't got that far yet. I will be storing these on a magnetic sheet. All right, here, got it. I was looking for my chicken coop. It's like, where'd my chicken coop go? And now I need the little white piece of paper. Oh, here it is. That is the white piece. There's also like a white piece of paper that says chick dies, and that's already gone. I have no idea how things disappear so quickly in my craft room. But there was something that said chick dies. Oh, well. I'm going to move that off to the side, and hopefully I don't lose it forever. I'm going to put it in a bowl because I think I'm going to lose it. All right, so now there's something else I do with these. Okay, so one little thing that you can do with these little eggs is I have this little sticker machine okay so you can put the little eggs facing up I'll link to this little machine you know later when I get a chance and I just put all the little eggs in there I put my little chicken coop in there where's my where's my other chicken coop we'll just use this chicken coop he fits in there this is a small one I have I have about five or six different sizes of this machine so like this is, this is a really tiny one that's only like an inch wide, but you get the idea. And I have ones, they're all manual. See? So I make a sticker. But I, but I usually use what's called um, dimensionals, and then I just peel the sticker off. It has a little teeth there, okay? That's because these eggs were being put right on my cards as stickers. But I did use a lot of dimensionals for my chickens, so in that case, I didn't make them into stickers. Okay, so that's how. Now I have a bunch of stickers to use on my cards. Okay, now that was one thing I wanted to show you. And the other thing I wanted to show you is about how to color this chicken wire and how to color these little signs and how to do, so, you know, just a couple little more techniques. So you have your, oh, there's another die. See why I lose my dies so much? That's why, because they're just never go back in their case. So now I'm going to show you what's called the, the blending technique. And I usually use a sponge brayer, but in this case, I'm just going to use the crumb cake ink, the crumb cake ink. I'm opening up crumb cake ink, and I'm going to put that there. And instead of, instead of using, this is a blending brush. These are really soft and nice. But inst instead of tapping right into the ink, because this is kind of a new ink pad, I'll put it there. I want to tap onto a stamping block. Let me get that little piece of paper out of there. 
So the technique is that you stamp onto a stamping block like this. So you put some ink on your stamping block, right? And then, you're, and then you put your blending brush into this ink. So now you're not getting as much ink on your blending brush because you can tap it and control how much ink goes on your blending brush. So what I like to do is just tip, tap onto my stamping block and then I like to go, see, I like to get the biggest blobs off first so it, it's not so harsh. And then I can color my little signs. And I don't want to color my whole sign. I just want to color the edges of my sign. And the reason I used basic white was so that you could read my signs easier. And that's the reason I used Daffodil Delight is because, you know, I wanted to, I wanted my, you to be able to read my sentiments. Oops, I messed that one up a little. But then you just turn over the sign. We'll do that one now. Okay. So I just kind of went around the edges like that. And if I didn't, if I messed it up too, I just put a little egg on the side too. I put a little color at the bottom of the side. I was just leaving a little bit of room for the hay, for the hay chick or whatever my sentiment was. So in this case, we'll put a hay chick on there. Okay. Oh, thanks for the, glad you like that tip, okay? So I to test the hay chick, I just kind of tested it to make sure it was inked up good. Okay, so that's the idea. So you could still read it very well. And that's kind of a dark sign, but you get the idea. So hey chick or whatever, whatever the sentiment is. There's the only three sentiments were you're a good egg, have a happy day, and, and hey chick. They all fit inside the sign. All right. Now let me close the ink and show you the projects. Or show you well, so to assemble them. Oh, and this is the same thing for this chicken wire, right? Same thing for chicken wire. Here. Let's just color the chicken wire while we're here. You want to color it with some contrast. You know, you want to contrast the back. So, of course, you could leave it. You could leave it white, the chicken wire, if your background is dark. And if your background is light, then you want to color the chicken wire dark. Basically, you want to give it, to, you want it to contrast the color of your chicken wire with the color of the, contrast that with the color of your card. Okay. So, I made a bunch of card bases. For this project I'm about to show you. So that's the blending, the new blending brushes. I, I used this paper because I thought it had a lot of cool colors in it for that, that matched the chicks and the kind of the farm theme. And this is from the annual catalog called Artistry Blooms Designer Series Paper. So what I did is, and I've already prepared all these card bases, I put some Artistry Blooms on different colors. So like this is a, on a white, Whisper White. This is a piece of crumb cake with a rich razzleberry background and then a piece of artistry blooms layer. This is a gorgeous grape with an artistry blooms. Another gorgeous grape with artistry blooms and white. These are chicken wire elements that are retired now. But Stampin' Up! used to sell chicken wire elements. They came in a pack like this and they're retired but they're they're going to be perfect for making cards. I might cut them up and make them smaller so I'm thinking of just kind of putting that in the background like that. Then I used some In Good Taste Designer Series paper on crumb cake, In Good Taste, a Tasteful Textiles Embossing Folder, Rich Razzleberry Embossing Folder. This is a piece of Oso oh Ombre on a piece of Calypso Coral. So these are cards ready to go. And then so what I, you know, to make my cards, I just started kind of putting the elements. So here, like, you know, I just started putting the elements together and building the cute little cards. You know, putting the chicken coop in the background there, or putting some chickens there, put some little signs, put the little eggs, okay? So it's you can make instant cards when you have all your pieces made. That's why I want to teach you the techniques. It's not about how to make, I don't, I don't want to come on here and show you how to make a specific project because no two projects should ever be exactly alike. I mean, sometimes I show you a specific project, but in this case, I just want to show you all my different projects and I want to show you techniques that you can repeat to make any of your projects. Now for the little chicks, I thought they were kind of bland, just like that. Just a chick hatching out of an egg. So what I did is I colored in the little feet, of course, with pumpkin pie, whatever color of orange you want to use, for the little chicken feet. And then I took my blends, and this is the reason I have this, because you might be wondering, why do I have the blues there? These blues, this blue is, is called pool party. And I took the light pool party, and I just went like that. 
just like that. And that's it. You just do that to your egg. I kind of do that to snowman a lot. Just color the side in a little bit. And I do that to snowman a lot. And then I took the lightest yellow I had and I did that sometimes to the eggs. So you're going to see that little line on some of my eggs. And then what I did is I also took my Wink of Stella pen. Now you can dye the Wink of Stella. Let's put this on top. The Wink of Stella is a glitter pen and you can actually put, uh, this is a piece, this, I put some bumblebee in it. You can color your old Wink of Stellas, your glitter pens, and they have a little bit of a tinge to them. This one has a little bit of a yellow tinge. Well, I keep refilling it, so I, the yellow tinge is, it's going over time, but it did have a yellow tinge, but this is, and I also just used regular Wink of Stella. It's a clear glitter pen, and I used it on my chickens. All right, so let me show you my chicken projects, okay? So let's, here are my chicken cards. See, I just showed you how quick it was to just, if, since you have all your card bases, just to throw a card together. I, I would pop those up with dimensionals and things. See, just pop them up with, pop your chickens up with dimensionals. Put, you know, put a few dimensionals on the back of your chickens, big or small, right? And stick them on your card. And that's it. And sometimes I would just use the stickers I made for the little eggs. And I use some adhesive back sequins that are from the Artistry Bloom Suite to make little accents on my cards. And there's the chicken coop. For this hay chick, I use the classic label punch because it's perfect. The hay chick is perfect with the classic label punch. I'll show you that. You just go like this. Let's do another one. There. And then you take your classic label punch. Oh yeah, you can put it on wobble springs too. I do the wobble springs for my 3D projects, like my pizza boxes. I, I put lots of chicks on wobble springs on my, on my, when this first came out in 2017. The, but ha however, these are cards and wobble springs are hard to go through the regular mail for me. But that's how you do the Hey Chick. You just use the classic label punch for that. That's how I got this in Mango Melody. Okay, you can see some glitter on there. Wink of Stella, the golden eggs. And that one had a little bit of pool party. Okay, so you know how I made this card because I showed you how I did the layers. Rich Razzleberry, Mango Melody, and a piece of Artistry Blooms. Okay, next card. Very similar. Next card is, you know, you can see each, each time I color the, the chickens, they're all different. The coloring's different each time. Just, I showed you how I did that. Either Mango Melody or Daffodil Delight. These are little signs in Daffodil Delight. Three little eggs. I did three eggs here. I did two eggs because I had this egg. He's my third egg. I try to do elements in threes, whether I do sequins or eggs. I try to do things in threes. And for this one, hey chick, have a happy day with a little bit of Wink of Stella. This is a piece of Artistry Blooms, a piece of Mango Melody cardstock. And then in behind here and right here, these little guys are called the Oso Ombre Designer Series Paper, which looks like the Oso Ombre has, this is also Oso Ombre. The reason I used Oso Ombre is because when I go inside to this Artistry Blooms, it says what the colors are. It tells me the coordinating colors. Calypso Coral, Mango Melody, Granny Apple Green, Rich Razzleberry, Gorgeous Grape. That's why you kept seeing me use those colors over and over. So I don't have to think a lot. What colors should I use for my cards? I know what colors to use because I'm using Designer Series Paper, which coordinates with certain colors. Okay, to make that, I use the Double Oval Punch. Have a happy day and punch it out. Okay, so that's that card. This card, I've used the corn. And to make the corn a little darker so it would contrast more with the background, the corn stalk, I just colored it a little bit. I took the little corn pieces out of my, I'll take some out of my bucket here, and I just colored them a little bit with the blends to make them a little bit darker. But I only colored the top of them around the edges like that. Sort of like that. And that way the corn has a little contrast with the background. Okay, so that's just, that's what I did for those pieces of corn. And I also colored with glitter, Wink Costella. I put the little chick up on the little stump. And then I did, hey chick, you're a good egg. With the crazy hair, no, or crazy feathers, not crazy hair. This is a Granny Apple Green card. Okay, now this one's a new team member card. I thought of this one a while ago and I thought, I gotta, I gotta make a team card. I always do a team card with like whatever stamp set I'm working on. So over Christmas time, I did one with gnomes. So new team members got 
the, gar the, the garden gnomes, not garden gnomes, but the Christmas gnomes, the gnome for the holidays ones. And then recently I did the, hap the snail mail called Snailed It Snap Set with a bunch of snails on it for Welcome to the Team. And then I thought, you know what? The next team member gets the um, this one, the Hey Chick, Welcome to the Team. <laughs> and I have a little chick sticking out of the back. I tried to put all the chicks on there, but what happened is this chick, they wouldn't all fit, okay? And so, I, But it fit when you put one sticking out the back. So this is this is my new Welcome to the Team card for a while now, until I come up with something else. Okay, now this one is... I like this one better, the way that the corn shows up on here. Okay, so you got to think contrast, right? When you do things, you got to... It, it, the reason this doesn't show up is good. I like this background better, the artistry blooms, but I couldn't use the the old olive on here. I couldn't use the old olive corn. I could have, but I'm saying the granny apple green was the coordinating color. I'm using granny apple green because that's what the designer series paper coordinates with. But the old olive is darker and it just would have contrasted better. So maybe next time I'll break that rule. But anyway, this... This doesn't show up as well, but when you put the old olive, this is a piece of old olive corn. Look how well that shows up on the wood background, the wood texture. And this is an old olive card. So there's a difference in the greens. Okay, this is old olive with the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. Okay, and I did three little eggs and different shades of the metallic. Okay, so those are my five. Now, my friend sent me a card and... I saved it inside my stamp case, so I literally put this. She sent it during last last time when I got this, like, the Celebration 2017. Look how awesome, and look how different it is, right, than what you just saw me color. So pretty much the bottom line is these chicks are awesome, and you can color them any way you want. I mean, you can color, they, these are so fantastic that they all look good no matter how you color them. Okay, so this is... This is from my friend Catherine, and I don't want to read you her entire note, but she basically was saying, you know, that she that she was saying that I, she hopes I enjoy my new toys and that she was sending me some stuff. And these are little stitch circles and everything. So that's just a different style. And then my last project is just something I'm working on. So I do a lot of care packages, not just for Easter, but for any time. You know, any time you do spring care packages. I can put this little chicken on there. So these are just little bags that you, you can get these like in the party section behind like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You know, in the party section where you see little party favor bags. And I just put Ghirardelli in there. And I think I put that in this one too. And it's just so simple. Yes, yeah, sea salt. Ooh, intense dark. And you just simply just stick on there. You know, you're a good egg. That's, that's it. Just very easy. Very easy little project. And tuck it in. Okay, so those are just some ideas of what you can do with the Hey Chick stamp set. And the Hey and the Chick dies. <laughs> so I hope you like that technique. And, and uh, tips and tricks for coloring, assembling cards, and, all, and die cutting, and all the different things that I hope, you know, that you learned along the way. Or you might have already known and just be reminded of. And you'd be reminded of, hey, I have these stamp set from a while ago. Maybe you can go pull it out if you already have it. Or right now, we have what's called the birthday chick. I'm just wrapping things up here. Um, don't know if my, my mini catalog is anywhere nearby. Yes, it is. So I didn't mention this the whole time because I was just focusing on, well, because this is the one I have, honestly. I'm only telling you about this one because this is the one I actually have projects done with. But if you like this chick, if you like this right now, you're going to love birthday chick. And I'm going to show you birthday chick because it coordinates. And right now we have, so right now this promotion, this is, this is called an, um, an off catalog promotion, meaning, okay, so page 52. This, this promotion with the hate, the chicks and the chick dies is going on right now. These aren't even, the, the, the hey chick I just showed you is not even in the regular catalog. It's just something you can find on my website, which is linked in the description of this video. But this one is in our catalog. The, the Hey Birthday Chick is in our catalog. And I think, honestly, if I look at my customer orders, this one here, since the time I've been a customer, between Celebration, when we used to be able to get it for free, and now that you can buy it already, customers have bought this already, 
This is my most popular stamp set, I think, ever that my customers like. And a lot of my customers are buying this Hey Birthday Chick. And there's Birthday Chick dies to go with the Hey Birthday Chick. Okay, so check, check that out on my store. I might get this next. I just didn't yet because I just, I have so many, uh, some of my crafty friends say, I have uninked, uninked stamp sets. Meaning if you haven't used the stamp set yet, it's hard for me to get new stamp sets until I start at least trying to use the ones I already have. But I do plan on getting, I might get that birthday chick before it retires. But definitely I'm going to be working on these ones for a while. You saw, you saw what my stack is. I mean, this is what I'm doing next. This is, I'm making all these cards next with my bucket of crafty goodness that I've already cut out a lot of the chicks. I'm going to be coloring them and, you know, I'm going to be putting these together and just making, making lots of cards. That's what I'm going to be doing next. So thank you for watching. This is the Paper Chef. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and helping it grow to where it has grown. And here's my website if you want to shop with me. Have a great weekend, friends. Bye-bye.